It's your boy DL back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are back with I'm Alan Partridge, season one, episode three, Watership Island. Before we dive in, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell, get a video a thumbs up so it's suggested. What do we got? Uh, then we bring the cows in, get them milk by 6 a.m. So all You're listening to this morning's farmer. <laughs> Go on, you were. Uh... Talking about cow bringing in. Yeah, we bring them in from milking, and then all that can go. Pop the straight jackets on them. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks very much for being this morning's farmer, Robert Moon. Robert, uh, did you have your breakfast this morning? Well, I, I reckon we think. Can you just answer right? yes for the? <laughs> yeah. In which case, you must be a full moon. <laughs> Hello. I'm still here. Yeah, I was uh, making a pun on your name. All right. Anyway, thank you very much for being this morning's farmer. <laughs> Sorry about that, Robert. A bit slow on the uptake there. Uh, don't want to have for breakfast. Presumably an infected spinal column in a bat. Yeah. Joke there about how infected cattle feed can attack the central nervous system. It's just come up to 5.35 a.m. Kommen Sie bitte und listen to craft work. Right in the bin. Let's get back to Cockadoodle Who. Cockadoodle Who. And I asked who invented the skip. Jack on line two. Morning, Alan. Good uh, morning. Look, I just wanted to uh, say your comments earlier about farmers was ignorant and offensive. Who invented the skip? I don't care who invented the skip. I think it's way out of order. Who invented the skip? You, you speak like a man who has no who knowledge of the skip? subject that you're talking about. Who invented the skip? <laughs> I don't know who invented the bloody skip. Bobby Moore, I don't bloody know, do I? I'm just sick and tired of you slagging farmers off. Are you going to apologise to them all on your show, are you? Are you going to apologise? Come on, I mean, you must know some of the rotten rubbish you produce. I mean, tongue, for example. Who eats tongue, for goodness sake? Imagine a tongue sticking out of a sesame seed cob. Listen, you made these comments without any real knowledge about the pressures that we're under. I just didn't find it very funny. That's all. Well, I wouldn't eat one of your tomatoes if it came up and said, eat me, oh. which is not unlikely, <laughs> considering all the rubbish you stick in them. You <laughs> shit. Caroline, line four, hello. Hello, Alan. Hello. So, yeah, have you got a brain or is your head just full of shit? <laughs> OK, Mike from Polgrave, are you there, son? Oh, you ignorant <laughs> All the farmers calling in, this is Allen. Hating Allen. Teach your white man. <laughs> Wrap him up in black skin. <laughs> What's the next bit? Yeah, add a dash of blue blood. Add a dash of blue blood. And a little bitty bit red Indian boy. And something else in Geordie. This hasn't been cleaned up for years. Hey, there's a little Japanese soldier in here still fighting the war. <laughs> <laughs> You're daft racist. <laughs> Curly black and kinky, mixed with yellow chinky. Oh Can wow! Can you still say that? Oh, you're all right with that, like, because it's 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 a race of people and it's a food. Chinese. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Huh? Partridge. Yeah, yes, I'll hold. Yeah. I'm possibly up for presenting a Hamilton's water break video. Oh, yeah. yeah. The Norfolk Broads. Hi. I'll tell you, how I found out about this job. Uh, Bill Ardy was up right. Hello? <laughs> yes. Well, no, the, the last corporate job I did was for uh, a company that makes toner for photocopiers. No, no, I was dressed as an exclamation mark. <laughs> well, no, I, I walked out after five minutes. It was demeaning. I had to flag a cab dressed up, which, which helped, actually. <laughs> well, I'd be delighted to do the job. Well, no, hang on, no, you can't book me and ask me to pull out when Cliff Thorburn becomes available again. Well, no, look, you've got a choice. You can either book me now or wait for Cliff Thorburn. But if Cliff Thorburn goes AWOL, you're up slack alley. Now, who's it to be, me or Cliff Thorburn? Thank you very much indeed. Kiss my face. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to present a corporate video for Hamilton's Water Breaks. Champion. Why, yay. That sounds jolly, doesn't it? Why, yay. <laughs> Have you ever been to the Far East, Michael? Oh, well, uh, only uh, Manila, Hong Kong and Bangkok, like. Bangkok? 
Hi. Um, so what did you see in Bangkok? Oh, I saw the Golden Temple, man. Beautiful it was. Yeah, what, what else? Uh, well, there's a, there's a real market, right? All the little boats come up and they've got all the Michael, fresh Michael, produce Michael, on Michael, 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 come on. Tell me about the lady boys. <laughs> them transsexuals. I, I seen them, but, you know, they're disgusting. I kept away from them. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Fascinating creatures, though. <laughs> Look, looks like a lady, but uh, really it's a man. I don't find them attractive, it's just confusing. <laughs> I suppose you've uh, got any army stories about them. I, mean, I, I did hear about this corporal, right? And he's in the 3rd Battalion, this lad. But he's right mean, OK? Yeah. And he guns out in Bangkok, right? And all the prostitutes is coming up and seeing how much. Oh, oh, and he's going, oh, I'm not paying that, right? Yeah. And then this beautiful lassie comes up. She's gorgeous, man. She's half the price of others. And they get the dude, he puts his hand up my skirt, gets a hold of the old meat and two veds, right? <laughs> he's, hang on, I've paid me money, I'm going to have some So he flips him over and he... F <laughs> and funny, and funny enough, it lands on its wheels and it starts first time and they just drive away. <laughs> oh my god. Strangest story I've ever heard. Oh, hello, Len. Oh, I see what you are, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Michael was just telling me an army story about a friend of his who slept with. A Land Rover. <laughs> Lonely nights in the desert. It's all fixed now, Mr. Patrick. I'll be on my way. Right, OK. I'll on it. Just to check. That wasn't the real ending to the story, was it? <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just a few things, Alan. We've had a call from Norwich Radio. There have been more complaints from farmers about well, what you said. How many? Fifty. Oh, your age. Oh, my God! Alan. It's such a savage. Speaking to them, they're coming over this afternoon. Right. Uh, did they say that you have to have your wife on the shoot? Oh, Lynn, did you tell them that my wife has left me and she's living with a narcissistic sports pimp? You, you popped out again. <laughs> so, that, that wasn't deliberate, promise you. It's not a cry for help. <laughs> I've had these shorts since 1982. They did have uh, an underpant lining, but uh, it's perished. Yeah. They've uh, taken a bit of a pounding over the years. In fact, can you get me some new ones, please? I'm going to have to ring Carol and ask if she'll uh, do the corporate video. Let, let, let you speak to her. Hello. 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 Yes, he is. It's a man. Oh, that's, that's a boyfriend. Hello? Yeah, it's Alan, your lover's husband. Yeah. <laughs> The immersion heater. <laughs> it's, it's, it's underneath the stairs. I mean, you only really need to press that if you're having a deep bath. <laughs> well, put it on an hour before. Bob's your uncle. You've, you've got a deep bath. <laughs> yeah, well, if you would, please, yes. He's gone to get Carol. You speak to her. You speak to her. Oh, my Lord. Hello, Carol. How are you? Oh, uh, Carol, would you like to be in Alan's corporate video? Right. She says no and she wants to speak to you. So tell her I'm not here. He's not here. She says you can hear your voice. <laughs> Call a fat cow, then hang up. Fat cow. <laughs> well done, Lynn. Now, before we get up, I'm just going to warn you, I have popped out again. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, in, it's in no way connected with our proximity. So just don't turn around. Oh, Lord. Right, the boys are back in the barracks. <laughs> Take a bunch of white yeah, he know better than to wear these shorts, man. He, he definitely know better than to wear these shorts. <laughs> what we need is a great big melting pot. Big enough to take the world and all it's got. Keep it turning. I could pretend to be your wife. There you go. <laughs> Morning. Hello, Alan. Things are good.
good worker, but uh, well, she's a bit like Burt Reynolds. Very reliable, but uh, she's got a moustache. <laughs> a bit like uh, lady boys. <laughs> Look like uh, a woman, but really it's a man. I, I, I don't find them attractive, it's just confusing. <laughs> well, Sophie, you're, you're not a man, are you? No. Would you settle this month's <laughs> bill, please? Eight pounds mis miscellaneous services. That sounds disconcertingly vague. He's in this play channel. Yeah, it, it, it's very confusing. <laughs> so, I, I, I find the page was very confusing. Just, can I just explain? I was trying to access Driving Miss Daisy. Oh. <laughs> and that's why you only watched it for 15 minutes. Yes, yes. Because... And now I know that Sally. Y'all told me in a conversation that was Sally Rowe. Uh, when was this? She looks a, a lot younger. She looks. When was the show actually in? <laughs> <laughs> it was the wrong, wrong film. Uh, have you seen it? Is it good? What, driving Miss Daisy or Bangkok Chick Boys? <laughs> driving Miss Daisy. Is it a good film? I don't know, I haven't seen it. Was Bangkok Chick Boys good? I don't know, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because I was... I was in the bathroom. Well then, uh, Mr Partridge was just saying that he couldn't see Bangkok Chick Boys from his bathroom. <laughs> You can if you angle the mirror by the door. <laughs> no, I only watched it for five minutes. It's just the remote control's confusing. Oh, what you will have done is, when it flashed up on your screen, do you want to watch Bangkok Chick Boys? You must have pressed the button that says yes. Yeah, well, as I say, it's very confusing. Do you want me to come up and show you how to press the button that says no? Yes. Oh, yes, I want you to show me the button that says no. Oh, no, I'll show you that mirror thing. No. <laughs> Look, um, do you want me to settle this bill? Uh, no. I mean, yes. You're right, it is confusing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Partridge. Drink. No, no. Can, can I get any tonic water? Aye. With, uh, with some ice and uh, a segment of lemon. Uh, yeah. And could you top it up with some Gordon's gin? Uh, gin and tonic. Yeah, that's right. Oh, hello. The gentlemen from corporate video are on their way. Excellent. Well, I've done my homework. Yeah. Would you like a drink? Oh, thank you. Well, I'll have a Baileys. One small Baileys, please. <laughs> Look, I, I was thinking about getting a substitute wife, and I would really love you to go down to Soul Dangerfield's casting agency and tell them to get me a 40-year-old scorcher. And, and do use that word. <laughs> Hey, be doing Liz so wrong, man. I be feeling so bad for Liz. She doesn't deserve it. Yeah, you want a partridge? Yes. Hi, I'm Steve Bennett. I'm the director of oh. the Hamilton's uh, Water. Right, we video. spoke on the phone. Yeah, yeah this is uh, Hugh Morris. He's the marketing director for Hamilton's. He's going to be coming along with us, sort of uh, keeping an eye on us. Well, make sure I don't sink the boat and drown everyone like a big twit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be down the pub probably. Mm. What? <laughs> I'll be down the pub getting the beers in. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you speaking like that? Oh, it's a voice box. It's a great fun. Where'd you get those at a toy shop? <laughs> I've got my vocal cords. You sound like the girl in The Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got to say, I love the script. It's superb. Um, there's a lovely phrase in it where it says, boating appeals to both friends and family alike. Lovely phrase, very simple, very moving. Yeah, Alan... It's, it's, a, it's a boat video. You know, we're not we're not making a James Bond movie. Yeah. Interesting, because you do sound like a, a baddie in a James Bond film. Want <laughs> <laughs> to know vocal cords? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Alan. We, 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 we want to keep it simple, uh, and that, that, that's why we hired you. You're, you're a local fella. You know that means good. Uh, but how does that machine? I'm intrigued. Uh, this machine intrigues me. Like I've seen voice boxes, I've seen commercials with people that have to use them, but it's like. Because they can't, like, I'm guessing they can't speak and be heard without the box. But how does it catch, like, what they're wanting to say? And then bring it, I don't know. I'm, I'm genuinely intrigued in the science behind it. Communications with, with tradesmen, with landlords, with farmers. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, the pubs are open and we'll be in there getting pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Michael, do you want to pop that in the bin? I Just some, uh... Notes I made last night for a laugh. 
I was drunk, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I woke up this morning asleep on the sink, just like this. Couldn't sleep for eight hours, like that. I got up, walked downstairs, straight downstairs, had breakfast, didn't even wash my hands, because I'm a bloody bloke. Hey. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's the bar, gentlemen. Choose your weapons. What? But I'm, I'm offering you a drink. Oh, oh right. now you're talking my language. Well, I hope not. <laughs> Two lagers, three, three, three lagers. Three points of lager. Right? You, you're having a lager and these two drinks here. Yes, yes, th th these are the chasers. Never had one of them. God. We never had uh, a lager and, and gin and tonic and Bailey's Irish cream chaser. No. Your big girl's bras. <laughs> Have I got a name, that drink? Yeah, they're, they're called uh, Lady Boys. <laughs> Right, because, because gin and tonic and Baileys are like a ladies' drink, lager's a boys' drink. That's why I said that. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Oh, lady boys. <laughs> you want one? Yeah. 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 Three, 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 no, four lady boys. Four lady boys, yeah. right, you How much is that? Uh, that'll be, uh, £33. <laughs> yeah, well, here's to a, a good corporate video and, um, lots of being men. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> what time is it? Six o'clock. Uh, how long have we been drinking? Three quarters of an hour. <laughs> I think I'll um, go to my room and uh, lean on the sink. Uh, I'll, I'll have a little bit of sick. Mr. Partridge, that's the kitchen. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to cook all the food. Uh, this is a hotel. Three star. Out of there, man. Hello, Carol. Uh, it's Alan. Uh oh. How are you? No, you never call your ex when you're drunk. You never do that. Wait, I am having a fantastic time. Yeah. I'm having the best time since sliced bread. <laughs> uh, how's, uh, how's Mr. Planet of the Apes, man? Uh, is he still driving that Renault Megane? Uh, can I just read you something from uh, Top Gear magazine? <laughs> That's right, I've got it here, I've got it here. With a mere 90 brake horsepower available, progress is too leisurely to be called fast. But on a motorway in fifth gear, the Megane's slow pace really becomes a pain. Uphill runs become power-sappingly mundane, while overtaking National Express coaches can become a long, drawn-out affair. <laughs> Not my words, Carol, the words of Top Gear magazine. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> come in. Oh, me. I've come to show you how to use your telly. Oh, oh yes, yes, it's yes, very confusing. Yeah. So that's Sky Movies, Sports, CNN, Adult Channel. Yeah, it's not really my cup of tea. Well, I can disconnect it, put a scramble on it, just lock it out of the system. Uh, um, <laughs> it's got, it's got be a lot of trouble, won't it? Not really, it's just, um, just a switch. Um... <laughs> but it's up to you, yeah, you're the boss. What well, you get up to in here? It's your business. I don't get up to anything. <laughs> it's disconnected? Yes. Okay. There. That's disconnected. Good. <laughs> oh my god. Right, lads. Oh, all right, Alan. I got uh, really drunk last night. All sick everywhere. Are you sick? No, I'm really not. No, I'm not. What? Just certainly. Uh, First in the queue, and God was handing out chests. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I'd love to have it off with her. First in the queue was God was handing out 
<laughs> For a British holiday with a difference on a boat, always choose Hamilton's water breaks. With the melting of the polar ice caps, most of East Anglia will be underwater in the next 30 years. Oh, so wow. make the most of her stunning fens before the floods come, causing a little concern for these local farmers I chatted to. <laughs> this is my wife and I going off to the local marketplace, where we could buy anything from plimsolls to posters of famous Hollywood stars. <laughs> this chemical toilet is a Saniflow 33. Now, this little babe can cope with anything, and I mean anything. <laughs> I put in a pound of mashed up Dundee cake. Let's take a look. Uh. Not a trace. Peace of mind, I'm sure, especially if you have elderly relatives on board. <laughs> uh, try pedestrianising this. OK, can you hold that pose now, Alan? What did you <laughs> We'll dub that out. Play some music over it. <laughs> how are your, uh, how's your friends? Fine. It might look a bit pokey from the outside, but a Hamilton's boat is deceptively large. My wife and I found it actually offers the kind of luxury and comfort you'd normally associate with a good quality yeah. static caravan. You don't have any bacon? No, I'm vegetarian. <laughs> yes. No. Just a joke. I'm joined by Alice, who's not going to shrink me into a little bottle. She's going to tell me about Hamilton's holiday breaks. You regularly book, don't you? Yeah. And do you do that with your boyfriend? No, I do it alone. Mm. But you book alone? How old are you? 25. Well, what do you do on a boat alone? Read a book, relax, look at the scenery. <laughs> that she sounds weird. Yeah, I'm 20 guys! <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Alice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I actually do gotta agree with Alan on this one. That just, just that seemed like a, a lone activity. I, that's just me personally. I, Alan, I, I think you're right on this one. Sorry, thank, thank you, love. Thank you. A bit odd. Yeah. <laughs> Up with the partridge. You're joining me, Alan Partridge, and... Peter Baxendale Thomas of the Norfolk Farmers Union. Uh, now, yesterday, I uh, sort of trod in a rather large farmer's pat when I made some comments about um, intensive farming. Where did I go wrong? Well, I think your comments were ill-founded. They were deeply ignorant. They showed a complete lack of understanding of modern agricultural methods and simply served to highlight the sort of intense stupidity that farmers encounter from armchair pundits who forget to think before they open their mouth. But with a full and frank apology that you're about to give this morning, I'm sure you can dig yourself out of this rather ugly hole. God, hey! Yeah. <laughs> he let him have it right there. Um, Shoot. Sorry. Um, do you, have you got any, do you, any requests? Anyone you want to say hello to? Or? Look, I'm just trying to say that when you make ignorant comments like you did the other day, you serve simply to alarm the public and to inflame the farmers, which is exactly what you've done. Why don't you just apologise and make it nice and simple? <laughs> thought that would uh, fool you. Right. You, you, could, uh, you could talk the hind legs off a donkey, um, but your donkeys are probably born without hind legs. Because of all, all the chemicals you, you, you put in there... Uh, Chips. Alan, I don't have donkeys. And even if I did, I wouldn't feed them chips. This is exactly the sort of rubbish you came up with the other day when you talked about putting a spine in a bat. But I, I, I admit that, that, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have said bat. Well, good. Well, that's a start. Well, no, I, 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 I should have said baguette. Because, because a spinal column would fit Listen, in a baguette. Listen, you've upset half the farmers in this community. You seem to alienate everybody you come across, including, I gather, your wife, which is why you end up living like some bloody tramp in a labour. Oh. It's a travel tavern. I don't care what you call your sordid little grief hole. It makes no Jeez. difference. The fact is that an awful lot of my colleagues... They're yeah, farmyard animals. Yeah. You're talking about my friends. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've probably got more friends than you've got cows. How, how, many, this how, is ridiculous. how many cows have you got? I've got a hundred cows. Yeah, I've got a hundred and four friends. <laughs> what is going to gain you? Why don't you just issue a frank and full retraction of what you said? And you get yourself out of a yeah. lot of silly bother. Yeah, you are a big posh sod with plums in your mouth. Oh, I don't think wow. it's got anything to do with class, And the plums have mutated and they've got beaks. Beaks? Yes, beaks. 
Have you got any more of this, or do you want to stop at quacking plums? No, no. You, you make you make pigs smoke. What? I want to know where you think you earn the right to go swanning off swan, these ludicrous swan, 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 swan. You, you feed beef burgers to swans. Do I? Yes, you do. All right, well, perhaps you can tell me what's wrong with feeding beef burgers to swans. Well, what? Well, if you fill a swan's stomach up with beef burgers, it's full of fat, it'll float better. That's why we do it. Really? No, you complete cretin. I'm just contributing to this total farce. What else are you going to accuse me of? I'll tell you what. what? You, you, you farmers, you uh, don't like outsiders, do you? Like to stick to your own. What do you mean by that? I've seen the big-eared boys on farms. <laughs> For goodness sake, resort to If you see a lovely field... <laughs> bro, Alan, Alan, wow, bro. Alan is absolutely... Wild, bro. So we're having a picnic, and there's a nice pond in it. You fill in the pond with concrete, you plow the family into the field, you blow up the tree, and use the leaves to make a dress for your wife, who is also your brother. Have <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got anything else to say here? Well, listen, I'll tell you what the point is you have big sheds that nobody's allowed in, and inside these big sheds are 20 foot high chickens. <laughs> Because of all the chemicals you've put in there. And these chickens are scared. They don't know why they're so big. They, they go, oh, why am I so massive? And they're looking down at all the other little chickens. And they think they're in an aeroplane because all the other chickens are so small. Do you deny that? No. Uh, his silence, I think, speaks volumes. And, oh and basically, do you agree that everything I've said thus far is completely correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you also run over badgers in your tractor for fun. Yes. Thank you, Peter Baxendale Thomas. This is Tapau. How, how did it go? Oh, you know, up and down. It was terrible. All bad news, I'm afraid. The actress playing your wife can't do the filming today. Oh, why not? Well, she's got a part in the bill. She's playing a shoplifter. Oh, that's quite good. Oh, well, we'll just, we'll just have to think of something. Scene 13, take two. One of the benefits of global warming and international terrorism is that more and more people are holidaying in England. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Not a lady boy. <laughs> just why do you have a lady boy be your wife, did Lynn, bro? Oh, my God, Alan. <laughs> How's that? Hey, is Lady Boy still okay to say? Oh, I, I, I don't want to get cancelled. I, I'm just saying it because I've been saying it the whole show. It's not working with the towel. One of the benefits of global warming and international terrorism is <laughs> 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 Action! Absolutely. The Norfolk Broads offers the true peace and tranquility of the English countryside. A million miles from the oh, urban decay Lord. of the Manchester Ship Canal and the pot-smoking, whore-ridden waterways of Amsterdam. Indeed, uh, disused cotton mills and legalised hardcore pornography are a million miles from your thoughts as you negotiate the Norfolk Broads. In fact, the very fact that hardcore pornography is not on the agenda... <laughs> <laughs> Primarily a presenter, he is a snooker, ex snooker player, and it is, is an unknown quantity. Yeah, but he's not under a cow. <laughs> Book a holiday with Hamilton's. What a way to have a good time. Cheers. Cut! <laughs> okay, stick him in the ambulance. God damn! Well Cheers, Alan! Well done. Good luck with the evidence. Jeez. They really dropped a cow on his man. Oh my god, bro. Oh. <laughs> Alan is tripping, bro.
gonna ask him to come reconnect it. Hello, is that reception? Uh, Susan, uh, can you uh, can you make pornography come on my tally, please? <laughs> all we got for this one. You guys got a favorite video suggestion, you can subscribe to Patreon or drop it in the comment section. It's your boy, Indian. Out.